Great. So I think the first thing that we should uh, start doing is, if you don't mind, that you can introduce yourself to the audience so that they get to know who you are, where you come from, your age, what you do, and um, whatever you want to say and share with them. So please, go ahead. Cool. Uh, my name is Jeremy Miller. As he said, I'm 19 years old. Um, I'm a co-founder of the Start Ed Up Foundation, a nonprofit in the United States. We empower high school entrepreneurs and innovators to, uh, to fulfill their dreams and accomplish what they do. And then I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm also a marketing consultant and a speaker. Hi, everyone. My name is Hannah Herbst. I'm also 19, and I'm from Florida in the US. I began inventing things when I was 12 years old at an engineering camp, and I've been trying to solve problems ever since. Um, I won the International Science Fair this year. I've gotten to travel and share my story with lots of different people, and I'm really excited to be here in Madrid to talk to you all today. So thank you for having me. Thank you. OK, I'm Guillermo. I'm 25. I'm from here in Madrid. Uh, I started a project, small project, uh, which we gave uh, 3D printed arms for people with no arms around the world. We started with just one 3D printer, and now we have like 25 collaborator collaborators, more than 100 uh, arms around the world, and in 30 countries. So this is my, my, my thing right now. Great. So uh, a big uh, round of applause please for them. They do deserve it. Thank you so much for, for being with us. My first question is uh, for the three of you is, uh, as I said before, being young is not a limitation, but what are the main challenges that you have found along the way in this two, three uh, last years when you got started with all of this? What are the main challenges that you have faced uh, throughout this two, three uh, past years? For example, uh, yeah, Hannah, Jeremy. Yeah, I'll start. Um, one of my biggest challenges personally was sacrificing personal ego and accepting direction from others who were smarter and wiser than me. Um, and that gave me an edge. And when I heeded that advice or listened to what people were telling me, I was, I, I, I was able to go so much farther than other people around me because um, I would go after that advice. So sacrifice that ego and listening to others. Good, good advice. Definitely. I think one of the main challenges of being young is knowing when to ask for help. I've definitely had lots of different projects that I've done where I say, I can do it all myself. I'm trying to accomplish this impossible goal. I don't need any help from anyone. But I've learned time and time again that the opposite tends to be true, just like you said. You have to reach out to people, ask for help, because we're not meant to know everything on our own. So getting over myself, essentially, and learning to reach out for help. Yep. Yeah. And delegate is, I totally agree, delegate is more it's really difficult in the beginning. You have to learn. And this is really good to be young because you have to learn in the beginning to not create, uh, create like uh, problems in the future. For me, the problem was time because I realized that I couldn't afford have three jobs <laughs> and then in my free time have my project. So actually two months ago, I quit all my jobs to start this, this project like a full time. So I decided that because I said, okay, I'm young. I'm still living with my parents. <laughs> I say, okay, I can do it right now. Maybe in 10 years I cannot do it and I have to have another job to complete my, my project. So I think the, the problem is realize about your problems and then uh, figure out and, and fix it. And that takes me to the next point where I mean, we've been talking about before the, the importance of uh, attitude, of talent and of passion. Uh, I guess in, in your three cases, which are quite different uh, if you compare them, uh, passion has played a, a very uh, fundamental role. Uh, what kind of like point in your life actually push you to start what you're doing today? What, what, like, is there any concrete fact that happened to you? Anything like, I don't know, the, a conversation with your father, something at school? What happened to you that actually pushed you to be not, I mean, because if, if you compare yourself to other kids and maybe in your school, university, not all of that, of, all of them are doing like this amazing stuff. So what kind of things that did push you to, to actually start doing this kind of things? Yeah, sure. I'll start. Um, so real quick about me. Um, I was abused as a young kid. So through middle school, I had depression and then come early uh, high school, um, things got so bad for me where I ended up trying to take an attempt to my life. And long story short, um, through the help of friends and parents and counselors and God, I believe I survived and, and I found kind of a, a purpose and a passion for serving others because when I could feel that I can make a difference in someone else's life or bring about positive change in someone else's life, 
that made me feel more fulfilled and alive than any drug or cigarette or anything that I try to make myself feel good. Um, so when I just found that passion, that purpose, and by serving other people and by default making me feel better, that's just what I knew. Like that's what I was. Gonna, that's what I was going to do. And to me, entrepreneurship at its core is about serving others. You're cre creating conveniences, solving gaps, and filling gaps in the marketplaces for people. So when I kind of found that passion was when I kind of overcame depression. And how was the first reaction of your, for example, parents or, or friends when you told them that you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Uh, so I actually, I didn't know I wanted to be an entrepreneur until I like really got into all the business things. Mm -hmm. um, I had a mentor or a counselor of mine at the time. And when I looked at his life, because after I had survived my attempt and was kind of searching for a purpose and searching for a lot of things, um, I analyzed a lot of the people around me in my life. And I had a counselor who was an entrepreneur, a, a word that I could not have spelled at that time. Didn't even know what that word meant. Uh, but when I looked at his life, he was fulfilled. His family, they were like not even just happy, but they were like, they, they're just on a different level. They, they live rich lives, not just on a monetary level, but they just were very fulfilled. And so when I kind of analyzed his life and looked at what entrepreneur was, I decided to research it and start my first company. And it was such a mutually beneficial thing where I got better by making other people better, where mm -hmm. everyone won. So I was, I was thankful that I was a lot, able to get a lot, a lot of support at a young age. Cool. What about you, Hannah, your case? Well, that's amazing. Well, <laughs> my story's a bit different. Um, I was always into theater and the arts as a child. I didn't really have a big interest in math or science just because as an elementary school student, I wanted to be in the advanced math class, but I took this aptitude test and I didn't do very well. They said, you're not smart enough to be in this class. And I said, well, um, I didn't think I was smart at that time for a very long period of my life. And then when I was 12 years old, my dad said, Hannah, you're not going to do theater this summer. You're going to go to engineering camp. And of course, I didn't want to go. I didn't know what engineering was. I already believed that I wasn't smart enough to do math or science. But he gave me some advice that I know I'll cherish for the rest of my life, which is just try this for one day. Give it a chance because you never know what's going to come out of it. And so I said, OK, that's fair enough. And it turns out I was the only girl in that camp when I got there. So of course, I didn't want to stay. Um, but he again encouraged me, just give this a shot. And I did. And it turned out to be one of the best weeks of my life. We got to program robots. We learned all about coding and how to make things work. And I was hooked from there. I went to back to my school and joined pretty much every robotics club under the roof of my middle school and ended up learning so much. And from there, it's just been, just like Jeremy said, a journey of compassion, trying to solve problems and trying to help others. How, you said something very, very important that probably to, to most of us that has happened as well, which is how important was for you the, your parents' support at that time? Oh, very important. I know I would not have gone to engineering myself without them saying, Hannah, you may want to try this. You may want to give it a chance. So very instrumental. And how can we encourage more? Because that's one of the main challenges that we have nowadays when it comes to, like, uh, uh, like uh, I don't know, like the, the education world. How can we encourage more women to actually do, uh, like, uh, science, technology uh, degrees and and to follow those type of professional careers, because that's one of the main challenges that we have nowadays. So what do you think is a problem? How can we actually address that challenge? Oh, definitely. For me, I think it was definitely the kindness of the people around me. Like, obviously, science and math are very male-dominated fields. But when I got to that camp, the difference maker for me was that they didn't tell me to sit off to the side and don't worry about it. We can do this. They said, Hannah, come learn to program. Don't be afraid. And that was the game changer for me. So just being able to include everyone, regardless of who they are, or what they look like, and just kindness. Because you never know how someone's feeling. As the only Absolutely. girl, I felt ostracized, scared. <laughs> but that turned it around for me. So. Absolutely. I, I agree with you. Guillermo, in your case, how, how was it at the, at the very beginning when you got started with all of this? You said that you had to stop working like after some years. You have to stop yeah. uh, working uh, full time, in, I guess, in other uh, companies. How was the beginning of it before you, you had to stop uh, all of that? Well, I guess there are many points in, in the life when you realize about you have to connect these points to realize that you are doing something different. Um, for me, for example, in the title, I would talk about this in my speech in at least, just to be juvious here. Um, sorry. Uh, when I was a child, I tried to create different kind of stuff. And my parents, for example, in my birthday, had no idea what to give me because it was so weird, a uh, child, and it, I just wanted to create things and something like this. Also, another point, it was traveling. Actually, when I realized about many cultures in the world and how other people uh, lived and this kind of stuff, I started to connect more things. 
And then we 3D print it, which is my hobby right now. Actually, I, I, I cannot stop to print everything in my, in my room. So these three points I start to think about, okay, I started to want to create things with 3D printed. I want to make the arm of Iron Man, for example. And then I say, okay, maybe Iron Man not, but maybe someone in the world needs this kind of thing. And it started to connect the points. And then I realized that I have to, I have to um, push this project. Then I, I was working. And then there was many, many, many emails, many, many requests, many uh, these kind of events, uh, many everything that I couldn't afford to go there. To, and also I couldn't improve myself because I, I think these kind of events uh, you improve yourself a lot. So I decided to, to quit and start to, to create this project from the beginning in 100% full time. And probably one of the main questions that we all uh, have when we attend this type of events and, and you get to meet uh, people like you, uh, we all have ideas, but sometimes we don't really get to know uh, how to get started. Like, what do we do first? Who do we talk to first? Uh, do we have to, like, uh, get some money and then uh, start a company? How do you get started with an idea to make it real? What are the very few uh, first uh, steps that you need to follow, in your opinion? Yeah, I think uh, Hannah said it nicely, you know, just try things. Like when I was, my first entrepreneurial venture was a skateboard and longboard manufacturing company. I'm a skateboarder um, and it failed actually um, at a loss of a couple thousand dollars. But through that experience, I was able to find my passion and learn many, many skills and meet many people. So especially when we're young, when, you know, maybe 10 years from now, you might be married and have kids. Uh, failure is not going to keep you successful or keep you from being successful, but the fear of failure most definitely will. Um, so if you just have that mindset of I'm just going to try something and no, no matter the outcome, I'm going to learn something and see if that thing was for me, um, then you know the world becomes your sandbox because failure isn't that much of a, a scary thing looking down at you. What about you? How was at the very beginning? Like what, what, what kind of things do you think that we need to, to first do when we want to set up a company or do something like you, you've done in your case? Yeah, I think the most important thing is to begin with a mentor. You cannot do it on your own. I'll tell you that right now. This I know from experience. I know many entrepreneurs know this from experience. But in my most recent project, the inspiration was that my dad was given a 30% chance to live two years ago. He got late stage cancer. He had an operation that led to an infection. And this really hurt me. I didn't want to do science anymore. I had no interest in getting up and going to lab. I just, I didn't want to do it. And a mentor in my life said, Hannah, the worst thing you can do is see a problem and do nothing about it. Because I told her about my idea for preventing infection, which was a bandage with a micro pattern on it. So I said, this is my idea, but I don't want to do it right now. So definitely get a mentor who can encourage you and who can make sure that you continue to get up when you fail and when you fall, because that's very important. Great, I think they deserve a big applause, so please uh, thank you so much for being with us.